Joining us is Jenny Manson uh, from, are you, are you, have you got your camera? Are you on? Oh, hold on a sec. Yeah, I am. I've got my camera. You're, I've got my you're there. You're there. Uh, okay. Uh, there you are. Good to see you, Jenny. Hello. Um, and we're also joined by uh, Daniel, Daniel Taylor, who uh, runs the Complaints on a Plate YouTube channel. Uh, are you there, Daniel? Yeah, hello. Uh, can't see you. Can you see me now? Um, yes, yes, I Great. can. Now, now, uh, what, what the, the clip that we're going to discuss um, was Jenny uh, appearing on Newsnight on a very important day uh, in Labour's history. In fact, I would say it's one of the most significant dates in the past decade, uh, in which Jeremy Corbyn had been uh, had, had his suspension lifted that day. Um, but there was this idea that he may have the whip, whip removed. Um, and Jenny uh, appeared on Newsnight to discuss this issue um, with uh, Kirsty Walk uh, presenting. Uh, yeah, now, Jenny, you would like to say something before that, you, you know, you, you don't think the BBC is, uh, yeah. is always okay, saying... this bad because sometimes you've had some good interviews right. on there. This... Um, Thank you. Yeah, this is the background. I've been thinking about what you said yesterday, Crispin. Of course, it was very important politically, and I had a word with, with Daniel as well um, about this. Up till then, both Naomi Wimborne and Idrissi and I did a lot of interviews. Other people did too, but we did particularly with the BBC. And I must say that the BBC News Channel, which I did about 10 interviews with, was always fair. I, mean, I sent one of the um, clips to Crispin. Of course, it's much less interesting. Yeah. It was quite fair money, but it was about Pete Wilsman, so it could have been very unpleasant. But the journalists there allowed me to talk, and there was no um, interruptions, and and generally a feeling of um, of balance. Um, and I also wanted to mention that Nick Watt has had done about six interviews with me before this news night, and again, as Daniel said, they can then edit it out. But I didn't feel that he was particularly biased. But I was always on a cold bench somewhere. They never allowed me into the studio. So what was significant with this particular Newsnight interview is Nick Watt did allow me into the studio, but clearly, as you'll see in a moment from the introduction onwards, it was totally one-sided and they did a lot of tricks to make, I was incredibly polite. I'm finding myself quite embarrassing to listen to, but the many, many people who complained about the programme, which we'll probably talk about afterwards, said it was yeah. rather effective that I got more and more ladylike and polite, but, but uh, didn't shut up. Um, and then I would talk about my, the investigation of me by the Labour Party because of that programme, but that'll come later, Crispin, and what happened Yeah, I, I, you're, you're giving away a lot of stuff here, <laughs> uh, Jenny. Um, uh, um, but uh, Daniel, you, you've studied the, the clip as well. You, you've seen uh, this clip. So you, you, you're, you've got some observations uh, to, to make about it too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short version of the, of the interview uh, that Jenny faced on... Newsnight on this really important discussion about uh, whether Jeremy Corbyn should have the whip restored, having had his suspension lifted. I mean, that is so important if we think about where we are now. Um, so this, this is a, 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 an edited version of that. Jeremy Corbyn had refused to retract his statement that the scale of the problem in the party had been dramatically overstated for political reasons. That was just 19 days ago. So how was this decision reached? I'm joined by our political editor, Nick Watt. So what happened this afternoon? Well, Kirsty, it's not an exaggeration to say that there is absolute turmoil tonight in the Parliamentary Labour Party. This is what one shadow minister told me. Number 10 could not have designed this better to make us look awful. It is a disaster. And let's just look at this tweet from Dame Margaret Hodge, the veteran Labour MP and former minister who told Jeremy Corbyn to his face that he was a racist and an anti-Semite. So she has tweeted, I simply cannot comprehend why it is acceptable for Corbyn to be a Labour MP if he thinks anti-Semitism is exaggerated and a political attack, refuses to apologise, never takes responsibility for his actions and rejects the findings of the EHRC report. 
ridiculous, she said. Now, I understand that Dame Margaret has relayed her concerns directly to Sir Keir Starmer, and as I understand it, he faces a fight on his hands to persuade her to remain as a Labour MP. Indeed, well, to discuss this further, I'm joined in the studio by Jenny Manson, the co-chair of Jewish Force for Labour, and from Liverpool Riverside, the former MP for that area, Louise Elman. Uh, Jenny Manson, first of all, why couldn't Jeremy Corbyn simply apologise today for what he said on the day that the report was published? Well, first of all, I want to correct something that you were saying. He did not um, reject the findings for the HRC. I want to say some things about the HRC report myself. He did not reject the findings. In that speech, you'll find he did not reject He said it. that, they, uh, he let's said be quite most, clear, he what he said, and you said it, yeah. that it actually had been, re yeah. accusations of anti-Semitism in the party had been dramatically HRC. exaggerated. So I was talking about the fact he did not reject the findings of the HRC report, which I think was said a moment ago. He didn't. No, you know, we didn't yeah. say he rejected the findings. Yeah. He said no. they've been uh, dramatically exaggerated. Two points. Okay. The fact Why didn't he apologise? I'm asking you that straightforward um, question. Because many of us know that these claims have been exaggerated. I am Jewish too. There's a lot of talk about the Jewish community just now and how offended they are and how Keir is very worried about them. Nobody seems to remember that there are about 250,000 or 300 Jews in, thousand Jews in this country. A very large number of us. So let, 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 no, let, no, no, quite, let me quite clear. In terms again. of your numbers. I am saying that. In, in terms of your numbers, yeah. make, make your, your point about the numbers. What I'm trying to say is there is a, many, many Jewish communities and they are not all upset about Jim being back in the Labour Party. An awful lot of us are very happy that he's back in the party. And a lot of us would say, like he said, that the allegations were over, over exaggerated, partly by the media. So the figure he, he mentioned in a book called Bad News for Labour, they discovered that people out there think that 30% of Labour Party members have been investigated. The actual figures are something mm. like 0.0. No. Can I also say that many of those allegations, according to the EHR C were not correct. Can I just say that you talk about many uh, Jewish people are behind Jeremy Corbyn. This eighty-four percent of the British Jew com Jewish community believe there's a specific threat to British Jews, according to the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism's yearly study. That is a yes. substantial amount. You know that the, uh, the yes. British Board and of Jewish Deputies which overwhelmingly no. yes. think this is yes. a retrograde yes. step, and you don't represent them. No. Can I just say something? About 10, 10, 20 years ago, Jews stopped voting Labour, so there's a considerable feeling about 80% of people don't get to it. Among the Jews who are Secular Jews often get, don't get invited to, to, for these um, surveys because they're not even registered. All I can tell you is that the Haredi community is, does not feel like that. Secular Jews don't feel like that. You cannot we lump say. all, you say no, secular Jews as if it's a, a you no. know, what the whole say? homogeneity of that I'm not lumping any more than anyone else is. But, but can I, I say? ask you about what you make of the actual report? Jeremy Corbyn said he will support the EHRC recommendations in full. Is he right to do that? The recommendations are okay, but can I just say something about the issue? But, is he right, but he's right to do that. He's perfectly right to do that. There are some points there that we're very worried about. We want, for example, as another Jewish, uh, a part of the Jewish community, we're very much hoping that Keir Starmer will talk to us about training. We have our own training beliefs. But let me just tell you one thing about the report. The re report found um, it makes no statement about the scale of anti-Semitism whatsoever, but what it did find is that there were very unfair practice in the um, investigation, and many f respondents, people accused, are particularly well, unfairly dealt with. Well, let, let, and let, let, let's move on what happens if Keir Starmer does remove the whip. From Jeremy Corbyn, you said uh, you heard Nick Watt say that that's yes. a possibility. Well, I'll be I'll be very sorry. What I want to talk about is justice. Jeremy is a very good man. He's an anti-racist. The EHRC report admits that when he he appointed the general secretary Jenny Formby, procedures started to get better. Shami Chakrabarti's report is validated in the HRC. I would like the media and yourselves, and I'm very pleased to be on, to start to look a bit more widely at what's going on, what the report says, what, what Jews, apart from those who speak up against him, think. We are also important. We are also spokesmen. Indeed, indeed. Let me now turn to Louise Melman. Uh, Louise Melman, what do you make of Jeremy Corbyn's readmittance today? <laughs> Picking up what you were saying about the whip, you believe that, that what is open now to Keir Starmer is to withdraw the whip from Jeremy Corbyn. What then happens, in your view, if that if he was to do that, what would then happen? Presumably, there would be you know, people like Jenny Manson and others of her ilk. There would be, again, a big battle in the party. 
they will be an ongoing battle in the party until the party is rid of the stain of anti-Semitism. You can't be an anti-racist party at the same time as carrying out racism against Jewish people. After all, the, the Equality and Human Rights Commission found that Jewish members of the Labour Party had been harassed and had faced indirect discrimination. That is shameful. Thank you both very much indeed. I'm afraid we have no time. Um, no, I just want to. Uh, I just want to say to add to that that Louise Elman, I, I whizzed through it, but um, she wasn't interrupted uh, at all, uh, and in fact, she's apo apologised to when um, it, when she was prompted on something. It was, it, was a, it was a very unfair comparison with what how you were treated, uh, Jenny. Um, Daniel, what, what do you make of what have you picked up from that uh, that interview? What what can you, you you put down to bias on there, other than the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. There's, I mean. there's, there's a, you go through every detail if you want to. You you can start with uh, Kirsty Walk's introduction, and then the context conversation with Nick Watt, and everything that's sort of being said in there is building a particular framing. Um, you can list the, the, the interruptions as TV producer. Um, gave an e email to Jenny, who she passed on to me, which shows the uh, discrepancy in the interruptions. Jenny, there was nine interruptions. And with Elman, there was two. Um, yeah, you can go through all of that. But I want to pick up on one specific thing, which is what is the debate actually about? And uh, how, wh where Jenny's position, what Jenny's actually arguing, isn't in the conversation until Jenny sort of makes her claim, right? Because the argument, right, is that the assumption is that Jeremy Corbyn has said something that's offensive, possibly racist. And therefore, the argument is around what kind of disciplinary measures should Corbyn face, right? Whereas the actual sort of, you know, balanced argument is Jeremy Corbyn's actually right and said the right thing, and that, that's the right thing to have said, versus that it's wrong, right? That would be the balanced conversation, but that's not what Newsnight frames it as. And you can see this, you can talk about it in the way that Walk uh, keeps confusing. I'm gonna say confusing, I don't wanna say she's getting it wrong. I'm just gonna say she doesn't know what she's talking about, which is the, uh, the nicer way of putting it. The confusing of the, what, what Corbyn's rejection of, well, Corbyn's claim that's been, that anti-Semitism has been overstated, exaggerated in the media, she keeps confusing this with him saying that it's been exaggerated in the EHRC. Now, she did that in last time I was on the show, we talked about another interview with Barnaby Rain. She said the, she made the same claim. The first thing that Barnaby Rain said was to pick her up on that. Uh, she hasn't learned from that experience, makes the exact same. Well, she, she kind of, in the way that she talks to Nick Watt, that's assumed. It's also then sort of confirmed by Margaret Hodge's tweet, which said, which makes that claim explicitly, and neither Watt nor um, Kirsty Walk come back on that. They don't come back on also, uh, well, Nick Watt introduces Margaret Hodge as someone that has said that Jeremy Corbyn's an anti semite to, to his face. That's not come back on. Elman is introduced, not in your clip, but earlier on when they're saying who's gonna be on the show, Elman is introduced as an MP, who left the Labour Party over anti-Semitism. Now that's her claim. That's, you know, that, that's, that's the whole argument is, is that anti-Semitism? But within the context of the show, this is all just accepted that there was, they left over anti-Semitism and that Jeremy Corbyn's made a claim that's offensive or racist. Can I just come in there quickly? That Margaret, I just what you said, Margaret Hodge is sort of held up as, a, as its virtuous, uh, you know, whatever she tweets is 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 the is the truth, um, and she was the person who said in that tweet that Jeremy had rejected the EHRC report findings. That wasn't checked by what or Kirsty Walk, and then Jenny at the start said, "Just want to clear this up," and that kind of that got the interview off to a. A difficult start didn't it that, that that clarification was not allowed yeah can i just say one more thing yeah so the, there was that element so you get this bickering at the beginning because jenny has to come in and, and set the record straight so instantly you've got this problem now 
Obviously, Walt could have said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. She could have said that and then clarified, but she didn't. She sort of felt quite hostile to, to Jenny's uh, correction. But my main point is the question that she gives to Jenny is, why couldn't Jeremy just apologize for what he said, right? Fine, if you want to have this kind of hostile interview environment, you can go away with it that way if you want. But there, the question then to Elman should have been, why should Jeremy Corbyn apologize? That's the balanced question. If you are talking about, did Corbyn say something wrong? Should he apologize for it, right? But that's not what the question is because the assumption is he did say something wrong. He should apologize. And it's all about should he be suspended or not, or should he lose the whip? It's about what kind of ramification should come from the bad thing Corbyn had said. First of yeah, all, I wasn't dissatisfied with the interview, interestingly, <laughs> because I got in everything I wanted to get. Before I go to those interviews, I always make a mental note or a paper note and put it in my pocket of the things I wanted to say. The EHRC had not found um, anti-Semitism in the party. Um, that it had suggested the, pro the processes were very poor, that um, that Jeremy had been talking about the scale. I, and I actually got them all in, so in a way I didn't mind. Um, but people minded terribly for me. I've never had so many emails. When I came up the programme, my phone was going, and people wrote at Chair JVL, and they all sent in complaints, as you probably know. A huge number of people made a complaint. Um, I'm going to come back for one to the politics in one minute, but just what happened next... Um, the complaints went, were sent to uh, the BBC and then to Ofcom and they were rejected. But about some time later, I found I was under investigation by the Labour Party for my anti-Semitism in that interview. I mean, it was absolutely chaotic and crazy. Um, so in my response uh, to the party, I echoed what Jeremy's defence was, not that I needed a defence or him, to say I was talking about the scale of anti-Semitism. I wasn't saying that anti-Semitism itself is exaggerated, which no one would ever say that any anti-Semitism can be exaggerated. Um, and the strange thing of is that I got off this. Um, so actually, by, by um, extension, I should tell Jeremy this next time. Um, he should have the whip back because the party cleared me of anything. And I told Crispin yesterday that, in fact, I didn't even get a reminder of values. But we think that was because... Um, as well as all this going on, Bymans were acting, um, for whatever reason, I was decided to have Bymans acting, and they were pushing the party about our suspicion, which is based on something we know, that the party decided to get rid of all JVL officers, so we pushed and pushed and pushed, um, and in the end they suggested I should go to jail for this question, and that Bymans should have their political their reputation, and then suddenly, somebody must have looked at it, and suddenly I was cleared and got this... Uh, almost an apology, all very interesting. But back to the politics of it all for one minute. Um, what worried me about the behavior of Nick Scott, Nick Watt that night, I've only really thought about it when I talked to Daniel yesterday, which is that I'm afraid the way the party brushed off the HRC report, rather than brushing it off, I mean, they turned it into a terrible report, a day of shame and all that stuff. Yeah. Nobody in the media read the report. As far as I can tell, nobody did. And when we did our, our examination, um, how the HRC got it so wrong, uh, we, were, we, di we disclosed what the HRC had actually said and, and their mistakes, but nobody read it. And that prepared the ground for nobody reading Ford and nobody watching Al Jazeera. You know, it's not even that the media are biased, but they are lazy or they've made up their mind and they're not reading, reading the stuff. Um, yeah, well, that's true. We, we... We, we get that, um, but we're, we're trying to unpack these videos because uh, who's, who knows what in history they'll be saying, this was all, mm -hmm. there's terrible anti-Semitism, Jeremy Corbyn should have apologised, all this kind of thing. If we actually have uh, records of, of what actually happened and, and those participating in it, then we might be able to change history. I don't know, that sounds a bit crazy. <laughs> um, but uh, Daniel, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on again. We, we should, I think we should carry on uh, analysing media when it comes up because um, we have to counter that um, every time, really, don't we? Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's really important um, when you see something like this kind of interview and the way it's framed. Yeah, it's just really worthwhile picking out, trying to, trying to understand like what, how is it so misleading? I mean, it's so obvious. You sit there like frustrated on, on your sofa but then you're like, okay, so let's try and pinpoint 
exactly what's going on. Because as you said in the last time I was on, you know, we need to think about when left left wing media uh, people go on or, or someone like Jenny goes on, like, what can we do in, in these short, these windows when we have an opportunity, we have a platform, a voice, what's the best approach? 